I thought it'd be fun to take a look back at some of the old and new Halloween posters spanning decades. If you like these poster breakdown videos, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel as I post new ones each and every week, along with movie reviews and show reviews almost every day. Let's begin. Ladies and gentlemen, what we're looking at right here is one of the most iconic movie posters, full stop. This was illustrated by Bob Gleason, and it continues all these years later to be a beautiful work of art. And it's the little things that really stick out. The way the hand, the knuckles, actually ripple into the side of the pumpkin. And the same with the curvature of the knife blade, how that's also reflected into the pumpkin's teeth. Even the skin tone of Michael Myers' hand blends into the pumpkin, showcasing that this dude, this shape, is really Halloween itself. When you think of Halloween, he wants you to not only think of candy, of trick-or-treating, but of murder. And it's going to come at his hand. Look at the way Gleason even emphasizes the veins on his hand. Those things are pulsating. They're almost breaking out of the skin. This guy is furious. He's angry. And he is holding on to that knife with all his strength. I think almost all of us have seen a carved pumpkin in real life at night. They play very nicely on that dark background, don't they? The way they glow, the orange color, it all really pops. And the same goes for this poster. There's also a great tagline on the side, which is all in white, easy to read, easy to focus on. And it simply states, the night he came home. Emphasis on the he, it's an italicized font, because it wants you to ask the question, who is he that the poster is referring to? The boy that grew up into a man, or the man that ceases to exist? Because something else has taken over, something sinister behind this mask. Then there's the classic Halloween font, almost serif, but not quite. There's even points on the letters. They, they look dangerous. Everything about this poster says Halloween is not a time to be celebrated. It's a time to be feared. Run out and see it. And everyone did. Great poster, very beautifully illustrated. We can only really go downhill from here. We have a theme here and we're sticking with it. The pumpkin's back in full frame. Now we see the skull head on. No longer a carving, now we have a full-blown human face coming out of this thing. It looks like a very crude early Photoshop job where some of the blending into the pumpkin isn't quite there. It's a little rough around the edges. The skull's badass, don't get me wrong, it looks cool, it's creepy. The pumpkin is a little low res, I'm not really sure why. Also, for some reason they put all new on the poster, That bizarre. There's some things about this poster I just don't really like. It's lacking creativity, unlike the last one, which the same can be said about the second movie. Kind of a dumpster fire, in my opinion. Halloween font treatment at the top stays the same. We keep it consistent there. And we also have a tagline. But again, it's it's just worse. It's longer. The, the tagline itself is really kind of lame. More of the night he came home. <laughs> okay. They're really spelling out that this is a sequel to Halloween and they're very much doing the same thing again. All in all, this is still a pretty cool poster and I could definitely see this being up in a collector's house right next to that iconic original. Candy corn on the table? I never saw Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. But if this poster is any indication of the quality of the film, I have no plans to see it. This is an ugly, ugly piece of art. I've read online, which makes it true, that Michael Myers isn't even in this movie, so I guess it makes sense to separate this poster from the original too. Gone is the pumpkins. Gone is the font treatment. Now we have this chrome, fugly looking thing. Looks very futuristic. I can't speak to the movie, but the poster's telling me that this is like some Back to the Future stuff going on. We're, we're headed through time and space itself at the way that the logo is kind of coming at us. We have a tiny bit of orange and red to draw us into one of the ugliest looking photos I've ever seen. Why is it stretched out? Why is it elongated? I guess it's to give off a supernatural vibe, like things aren't in order, they don't look quite right. And that's a problem when you want to show off a cool poster. We do have a skull figure in the background, kind of shadowed in the clouds, very ugly. Again, it just doesn't read well for a poster. We have a tagline at the bottom that's a twist off the original, play off of it. This one says, the night no one comes home. All right, I mean, that's that's something. I mean, we're gonna get a lot of people dead. No one's gonna survive this ordeal. Not quite as intriguing though. It's very on the nose this time around. The only thing that carries over from the previous two posters is that big empty black space around this. But what it's framing up is, is just miserable on the eyes. 
Again, why is the font futuristic? Why is it chrome and shiny? I can't look at this anymore. Let's go to a more modern poster. Halloween 2, AKA Halloween 2018. Why does Hollywood not know how to name things? Here we have a poster for that rebooted Halloween sequel, Halloween. The first thing that jumped out to me right away is that the title font has changed. No longer do we have that bit of serif in there. Now it's fully sans. It's, it's, it's got rid of that serif, dropped it on the side of the road, never looked back. Serif went out for cigarettes, didn't return. The font's fine. It's your traditional Hollywood impact style of font. It's bold, it stands out, it's, it's got that white popping on it. I like the tiny bit of orange that gives you the release date. It's a nice touch to bring in that branded orange using it in a very simplistic way for the date. Outside of Michael Myers, Jamie Lee Curtis's Laurie Strode has always been a staple for Halloween, even though not present in all the pictures. She's very much still on people's minds when they talk about this property. This poster is also a great nod to the original. We have Michael Myers in the shadows, looming in the background. And there's our hero, Jamie Lee Curtis, nice side profile. Side profiles are very popular in movie posters. It's a great way to showcase an actor. We're actually showcasing Jamie Lee Curtis's age. That's one of the major points of the poster. We see Michael Myers, he's got his mask, it's all scarred up, it's all cut up, he's weathered, he's been in the game for a long time, but so has our leading lady, Lori. We see her wrinkles and all on the face. It's a great contrast between these two polar opposites. Because with that age and with those wrinkles, we see wisdom on her face. We see survival skills on her face. We see a woman who's able to stand up to one of the most evil, sinister characters in all of movie history. A big separator in this poster from the past is the lack of color. And again, I believe that's playing off of the wisdom angle, but also professionalism. When you see things in black and white, you instinctively think, okay, this is gonna be a smarter movie. It's gonna be a little bit classier, high art. Maybe not in the case of Sin City, but that doesn't count. That was based on a black and white graphic novel. Regardless, that's what the brain goes to. And that's very much what they're trying to showcase. This isn't a dumb sequel. We're doing it right, we're playing it smart. Speaking of dumb sequels, let's see Halloween Kills posters. What we have in front of us today, ladies and gentlemen, is a perfect example of a pretty bad poster. Completely generic, has very little to say. We have the Strode family Robinson, three generations coming together to do the exact same pose, stern, ready for action. There's a tiny tagline next to him, so small, you have to zoom in, you have to enhance in order to read it. Three generations, Strode strong. Someone actually came up with that and made a designer put that on a poster. They were so ashamed, they made it as small as humanly possible. The empty black void that all the other posters have had so far is engulfed in flames. There's a little bit at the top, but for the most part, this whole thing's getting burned down. This poster says almost nothing to me, other than these are some strong ladies, I guess. But you could replace this background with a misty, dewy forest and almost nothing would change in terms of my impression of this thing. It would just be three ladies confidently standing in the woods instead of a burning hellscape. I'm sure these ladies did not pose for this poster. It was probably for some different one-offs and they just put them together, Photoshopped the living hell out of them. It all blends nicely together. The Photoshop work is good. It's just the poster itself is very mediocre, kind of pointless, honestly. One more Halloween kills just to get the taste of that other one out of our mouth. This one's far better. It's very cool. We just have Myers looking empty like he always does. You know, what's on this guy's mind? What's he thinking about? The black void is back, not only in the background, but also carried over through his lack of eyeballs. It's very creepy, it's very cool. I love all the grit and shrapnel and debris on the side of his face. I like how the orange fire illuminates him. It goes back to those original Halloween posters, bringing that orange over. And then we have that bold font at the bottom again. And there's a virtually identical shot of this guy in Halloween Ends. Now, the color is gone. It's, it's very subdued this time around. We do have a profile again. He's looking slightly in a different direction. I wouldn't be surprised if they took this from the same photo shoot or the same Photoshop files that they had available and just repurposed them a little bit. The second time around, this poster is not near as interesting. The fire's been kind of put out. There's only a few embers left and they're lighting up for some reason his chin and lower lips. That does nothing, that tells us nothing. I just don't, there's not much here. It's not bad by any means, it's a nice render, but again, it's not telling me much other than 
Michael survived a fire, like he survived being shot and stabbed and maimed and whatever else has happened to him over the years. We get it. The final Halloween Ends poster I want to look at is this Mortal Kombat-esque standoff versus one, where Laurie Strode is back to back with Michael Myers, rolled flame. I get that this is supposedly Jamie Lee Curtis's last Halloween film since the last Halloween film and the one before that. Probably real this time, so they want to give her a proper send-off, they want to give her her due on these movie posters. Fair enough. This is not great. It's very cartoonish looking, but it's not terrible all the same. For fans of the characters and the franchise, you might look at this and say, yeah, this is cool. I like that we're seeing these two iconic characters together one last time. For me, I look at it and I think, I don't know if it's illustrated. I don't know if it's photoshopped. It's actually hard to differentiate because there is a cartoony quality to it all. It's not terrible. It's just not my favorite all the same. And apparently this movie is called Ends this Halloween. I'm, I'm joking. I get what they're doing. They're really wanting you to hone in on the fact that this is the final film. Get out and see it. How is it going to go down? That's how they want to drive you in. By marketing it as the final, 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 final fight until the next one. Tons of fan-made posters have come out over the years for these two. Some officially done way later for different materials. Some are unofficial and look fantastic. I'll put some of them up now. I'm not entirely sure which is which at this point. I can only do so much research in between my real job. So you get what you get here. And I would appreciate you subscribing once more because I put a lot of work into this. I love doing the channel. I'd love to have you stick around. Lastly, make sure to like the video and comment below what posters you'd like to see me talk about next. Probably going to be Black Panther on the horizon. We have Avatar coming up. We got Black Adam. Wait, I already talked about those posters. There's a playlist. You can find it. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Wow, that was sure video, wasn't it? Thanks for watching it. If you really like what I'm doing here and on this channel, make sure to join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. You can give just one dollar a month and say, hey Adam, I love what you're doing. I appreciate your one-man operation. Here's a buck. Get yourself one-fifth of a Starbucks coffee on me. You also get access to 300 plus exclusive videos if you do such a deed, on top of other things like joining my Discord community at Adam Does Movies. You can even find me on TikTok. I'm on Twitch, playing games once in a while and talking movies there at Adam Does Movies. I mean, I'm around. There's places to find me. I'd love to see you there.